here's a tree tube that I put a little crab apple tree in and it's just popping out the top otherwise I got bird nets on them so there's one update that's kind of cool all right it's windy sorry about the wind but there is my muck hole pond filling up nicely I think it'll be like 25 foot deep and it was just a muck hole before and then right here are some persimmon trees they're actually gonna have some persimmons on them there's some pear and apple and everything looking really really good so healthy good ponds filling up um, I put some different trees there those look good so overall been a pretty good growing season and this rain has been very nice and needed. Spraying some beans, and there is my Egyptian wheat. It, it's gonna get tall, but these beans are weedy, but be good for a plot. I got a few cockleburrs in here. I'm gonna burn these up. So looking good for kind of late planted beans and very weedy, and I got a good combo in here that's gonna smoke all these weeds. There's my bean update, and I'll update the Egyptian wheat. There's my Egyptian wheat. And we'll turn. There's my Egyptian wheat. There's my Egyptian wheat. I'm spraying these beans next to it very carefully. It looks like it went in a little too thick. It's a little bit nitrogen deficient, but you can see the dark green right there where it's not nitrogen deficient. I'm probably just gonna let it go. It's, um, it's mid-July. This thing's got a long ways to go. I figure it'll probably be, oh, this will be at least 10 foot tall, maybe taller if I had to guess, maybe 12. Uh, and it's not perfect, but this will do the job. And when this finishes out, I may even have to go up into that blind and look to see if I need to thin some of the tops out. It's going to be that tall. I'm certain of it. So there's my beans. We're getting these cleaned up and should be a cool spot. So a little update, a lot more growth to happen. Here's the uh, third growing season on some straight candle switchgrass. I've done some videos on this so you can see so mid-july it's kind of mixed with the old dead stuff and then the new growth but this should turn into eight foot plus tall it got really tall last year so it'll at least be there probably a little taller now that it's third year so looking good let's take a tour around here this is the end of the switch grass and then kind of opens up into a mean by diversity so kind of see you know, some young growth with I mean there's everything from broadleaves goldenrod all sorts of funky stuff in here raspberries blackberries some grasses really good for birds and everything and then we get back into a little bit of cool season grasses and like here's some wild blackberries or raspberries or whatever and birds will eat those a lot more pheasants around which is really cool so just so many different facets of diversity it's critical some existing crp with forbs out here and now being july this stuff is just exploding for growth and that's there and then i got my big timber with the oaks and stuff out there so really cool come along nice I lied there's uh, some foxtail and crabgrass that got in there and that's what was depleting the nitrogen um, so I'm coming back with some atrazine or simazine 2,4-D and ammonium sulfate and I put the ammonium sulfate in there for a little bit of nitrogen but actually once the um, once the crabgrass and the foxtail gets out of there 
it'll free it up and it'll be fine it'd be fine anyway but i'm just being fussy so if you get weeds in there and this is why no till no till no till no till but i tilled lightly and i got foxtail crabgrass a few other weeds in there and simazine crop oil ammonium sulfate whatever uh, a little cocktail will burn that right up um this one specifically is sim or uh, atrazine ammonium sulfate and that right there will take care of everything and then i put a little 2,4-D in there just a little bit and that'll smoke everything and leave this really nice and freed up and we'll check back later i guarantee you now this stuff will be 12 foot plus uh it'll be in really good shape Just on the Egyptian wheat, nothing else. And this gun lets me do it. Perfect. It'll be perfect. Here's one week uh, post spray on those beans, and I'm touching up a couple little spots I missed. And we'll go look for this Egyptian wheat. So probably eight feet tall, seven over on this part. And then looks like what I sprayed in there is starting to kill it, so that's good. Yeah, it should be tall. It'll get a lot taller. The beans needed spray. They got sprayed late, but they look pretty good. They'll be fine. Missed, missed a couple spots on this. Ever hear of echinacea? A lot of people use it for when they're sick, stuff like that, or they used to. That's it right there, purple cone flower. And it's all over, really cool stuff. This stuff here is an invasive weed. It's called Cerecia lespertiza. Um, I hate it, I just hate it. So I am absolutely nuking this. I have a little secret cocktail that will get rid of this and then I'm gonna replace it with something else. And I have a lot of options, but I hate this stuff. Dealing with invasives. Doing my part and this stuff drives me nuts. And these are my signs. And the one part of land ownership that I hate is dealing with people like poachers. And we've dealt with them before and we've got some pretty awesome ways to deal with them um back in the day when i was younger i didn't have a place to go i hunted public it was junk there's nothing i could do this is one of the headaches of owning land and it's a real deal and it happens all over and we do deal with it I made those signs myself all right let's look at my poacher screen so this road used to be wide open there's a crop field behind there it's really boring to look at but uh Everybody used to drive by really, really slow, and we'll go look at it now. I spaded trees in here. You can see all the cedars. Those are all cedars. Really boring to look at. We're gonna zoom by this spot that was wide open. the fun of the evening and this is the great part about what I do for most of my day or a lot of days but the corn's looking good and I'm gonna take a little break drive around the block look at the CRP look at some crops um, probably look at some deer coming up here and uh, the next thing I'll be thinking about is big deer and it's coming soon, so I'm gonna be thinking about tree stands and blinds and all that stuff. He said. Check the creek. All right, look at that. 
There's water, and there's water flowing. So this is great. Think of all those summers where things are dried up and cooking. That's one benefit. And I'm pretty excited for deer season. Some natural fruit on everything. All the vegetation, all the crops look awesome this year. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna translate into a growing year for deer though. It was a tough winter. It's been kind of a cool summer. I don't know, but I know the crops and everything else are, are thankful and doing good. But I'm excited for deer season anyways. I'm real excited to see what happens. I'm checking some of this out, making sure it, what kind of shape it's in, maybe even for next year. Just look at how thick this is already. And I know Aaron's seen this, but it's freaking, it's unbelievable. Unbelievably thick. Sheesh. So good in here. It's so good. Mind boggling amazing. Another uh, boring corn look, but looks really, really good. year but a wetter year and a while January or June was rough actually I take that back and it's making a nice comeback it really looks nice it's not the best year ever but it's nice this is uh this is my day in the office some version of this and I do love this my native grass stand it's a homemade blind beans up there it's on the better soil and then I'm putting this rough stuff in the CRP and the rough stuff needs to be in it and I'm leaving the better stuff out and it's gonna better benefit everything it benefits really the whole farm and yeah this is my uh, this is my work day or how I'm ending it today and it is a lot of work but this is a lot of fun Twenty foot in a pass, probably going a little too fast, but still pretty good. 